Welcome back. In the previous video, we in introduced this nice this distribution of planes that you see in my back. These planes were the kernel of the standard contact bound form in R3. And they were the planes to which a curve should be tangent to be one of those curves that are lifts of planar curves by the sine area method. This distribution of planes and the choice of a scalar product on each of the planes via the geometric identification with the horizontal plane defines a geometry. We call this geometry the Heisenberg geometry. We have been considering the plane distribution, also called plane, plane field, given by the vector fields um, let's recall x of with coordinate x y z is dx minus y over 2 dz and capital y the point x y z is dy plus x over 2 dz. And at each of the point, we have been uh, considering these two vectors to be orthonormal. Mm -hmm. At each x, y, z, we consider um, x of x, y, z and y at x, y, z to be orthonormal. Orthonormal on their span. So they span a plane, they're linearly independent, and they, and they, um, they span a plane. And on this plane, we declare them to be orthonormal, namely we, we consider the scalar product that makes these two vectors orthogonal and of unit length. Mm -hmm. Then what we did is for each for each uh, uh, smooth curve gamma on an interval let's call it A, B, okay value into R3, for which uh, the, the derivative gamma dot t is a linear combination of the vector x at the point where the curve is, namely at gamma t and y at gamma t so for each of the of these curves we define its length we define a length for this curve namely what does it mean it means that if now you take um, uh, u1 t and u2 t, those functions such that we write the vector, the tangent vector as u1 t x gamma t plus u2 t y at gamma t, then the scalar product, the, the norm of this vector is the square root of the of the sum of the squares of these numbers. And integrating, we define the length. 
in the length of gamma is equal to the integral on the domain of definition of the curve of the square root of u1t square plus u2t square square root integrated in dt. A uh, crucial property of the uh, Heisenberg geometry is that this, this space is isometrically homogeneous. In fact, uh, we can put a group structure on R3, different from the Euclidean group structure, in such a way that all the above constructions were preserved by the action of, the, of this group by left translation on itself. Let's see how. On R3, we consider the following group law. So if I take two points in R3, let's denote the first one by x, y, z, and the second one by x prime, y prime, z prime. Now I will define a, an operation. Um, so the, the product between these two points is defined as, so I sum the first two coordinates, the first coordinates, I sum the second coordinates, I sum the third coordinates. If I stop here, I would have the abelian instruction. But now there will be one extra term, and it's like this. It's one half of x y prime minus y x prime. This you will see has a lot of resembled resemblance with the with the contact structure. Now, now you will see, okay? So, first of all, okay, let's believe that this is a group structure. And it's smooth, okay? This is just uh, an exercise, I leave it to you. And um, th this will really make the space R3 into a Lie group, okay? We will go back uh, in the course to the theory of Lie groups, okay? But just this means that the, the product is, and the inverse are smooth maps for the topology of R3, or for the differential structure of R3. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the, the claim that we, do, we, we have is that the, the vector fields X and, and Y are preserved by left translations by in respect to this group structure, okay? And therefore, the distribution is preserved. So, the claim is that the contact distribution, contact distribution, the one you see in the back of my picture, is preserved by um, left translations. Namely, um, if I fix an element, let's call it um, uh, STU in R3, and now I consider the map, which is called the left translation, L stands for left, the translation by STU is a map that has as variable the elements of the group, so let's write x, y, z. And this is, by definition, is the multiplication on the left by the element that we fixed. Okay? Now, I claim that these maps preserve the contact distribution. And actually, I'm claiming even more. I'm claiming that they preserve the vector fields each of the vector field defining the distribution. So let's let's see how it, uh, one does this cal calculation. Okay. We claim the left translations yeah. 
preserve x and y. Okay, in other words, these are left invariant vector fields. Okay, so let's check it. Okay, so um, what, what is it that we have to, to show? We have to show that um, so if in, in, in a cartoon, right, if this is R3, this is R3, and we have the map L of this element, this element mm -hmm. it was um, STU. Now, what we have to see is that if we take a vector, uh, if we take a point and we calculate the vector, so the point here is going to be X, Y, Z, then what we do, we have to push forward this vector on R3, mm -hmm. on another point of R3, by the differential of the left translation. And we will get to a point, another point, which is going to be exactly the image of this point. And at that point, if we calculate the vector x, we get exactly what we got by pushing forward via the left translation. So, so we need to check that if I take the differential of the left translation of um, vector field X evaluated X, Y, Z, I have X evaluated at the left translation of, at, of, um, of the point X, Y, Z, right? So this is what we have to check, okay. For doing that, we first need to uh, calculate the differential, okay? So maybe, let, let me write again the map. Um, page. Okay, so the map that we want, um, let's call it um, F for simplicity, F of uh, X, Y, Z. So this is just the left translation by S, T, U, apply to X, Y, Z. This was the product, STU product um, X, Y, Z. Okay, let me write it again. So I just sum everything first. Um, T plus Y U plus Z. And then I have to put plus one half of the mixed term. So I have to do the first one times the second one, so, I forgot the comma here. so is the first one times the second one, and the second one times the first one, minus the second times the first one, so S Y minus uh, T X. Okay, so this is the map. The differential is of F is, okay, it's going to be a three by three matrix, Okay, so let's look first at the first coordinate, and now I have to uh, have to integrate with respect to x. Hmm? Remember, s is, is constant. Okay, so I when I respect to x is one, um, then I integrate I have to differentiate respect to y, but it's constant, and also it's constant respect to x uh, z. So if um, I have Zero, zero. Now, second component, I have to integrate, I have to differentiate with respect to x, then y, and then z. So I get zero, one, zero. And now the last one, slightly less easy. Okay, we have to integrate with respect to x, and we are going to have a term. Then integrating with respect to y, we are going to have a term, and then with respect to z. Okay, so respect to x, we get minus t over 2, then respect to y we have s over 2, and then respect to z is 1. Okay. Okay. This is the differential at the point x, y, z. Actually, th this map was linear, so that actually the differential does not depend on, on x. Okay. In general, th the differential should might depend on the point. Mm -hmm. 
So maybe let's be more precise. This was the differential at the point X, Y, Z. Okay, so we found this map. Now we have to calculate this vector here. Now this vector is, um, so we can, in our treat, so this vector here, it can be written as one, zero, uh, minus y over two. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply the matrix by this three vector. Okay. So let me put here. So this was one, uh, one, zero, um, minus y over two. Okay. So this is a vector representing x at the point x, y, z, okay? So now I do this multiplication. So what we get is that the differential of f at the point x, y, z, of the point x applied at the vector x at the point x, y, z is equal to, okay, this one and this one gives me one. This one, this one gives me zero. And this one, then this one will, will be a little bit more complicated. And we are going to have this times this plus this times this. Okay, let's do this multiplication. What we have is the vector one, zero. And then we are going to have, so let's do it again. So this is, um, minus t over two times one plus uh, minus y over two, okay? So it's, it's um, minus t over two plus y over two, okay? So you can also write it in, in the differential form as um, dx plus minus t over two plus y Hmm? Okay, so what we want wonder if, if this is equal to um, x composed f at the point x, y, z. Hmm? But how much is this um, vector? So, so this is, um, is x at the point, um, the product, okay? So it was um, s, u, t, no, STU, STU times X, Y, Z. Okay, so now instead of writing all the product, let's remember how what is how X is defined. X is defined to be one in the first coordinate, zero in the second one. And here, what I should put is um, minus Y over two, I would say, but, Let's pay attention because this y means the second component of the vector that you're applying, right? If you apply to x, y, z, then it is y. Otherwise, it's the second component. Okay, we have to search for the second component of this vector. So this was the product. The second component is this, right? So this is the product. This is the second component. So I have to take the second component, divide by two, and put a minus in front, okay? So what I have to do, I have to take the second component, we said it was um, t plus y, t plus y over two minus, okay? So this is the evaluation. And as you see, this is the same vector as this. Okay, done. Let me do, let, let me give you an exercise to you. Uh, check that um, if you do um, y, uh, the differential of y at the point x, y, z, you have zero, one, uh, s plus x half. And this is exactly um, x is y uh, evaluated at the point f of x, y, z. Hmm? 
So also x is preserved. Hmm? Okay, good. Now, as a consequence of the fact that left translations preserve the orthonormal frame of the Heisenberg geometry, we deduce that the um, the the each each left translation preserves the length of curves that are horizontal, and therefore they also preserve the distance defined by minimizing the length of horizontal curves connecting each given two points. Okay, let's summarize this fact in a proposition. So, proposition. The Heisenberg geometry is isometrically homogeneous. Actually, um, I mean, it, it, it should also be understood that the fact that if, if, if I have a point in R3, then by translating by this point, the origin, I can send the origin to that point. So the origin can be sent by left translation to any point, right? To every point. And therefore every two points can be sent to the origin and therefore every two points can be sent one to another by a left translation, okay? And this left translation is an isometry for the distance. So the asymmetric geometry is isometrically homogeneous. Uh, let's say even more, we say that the space, the space has uh, Lie group structure such that each left translation with respect to uh, the product is an isometry um, with respect to the contact uh, distance. Which I think we call it DC. The model that we gave for the Heisenberg group has the advantage that it, um, in this model it's easy to compute and uh, visualize the one-dimensional subgroups. Um, so in this, in this, in this um, with this product structure, the, the one-parameter subgroup of this group are of the form, are, they are straight lines, they are um, standard Euclidean lines through the origin. One parameter, one parameter subgroups in this group structure are Euclidean lines namely so um, T goes to TV1 comma TV2, TV3 for some, some V1, V2, V3. Hmm? Now, what is it that we need to check? Okay, um, let's check. Indeed, what is it that I'm saying? I'm saying that if you take TV1, TV2, TV3, and you multiply by SV1, SV2, SV3, then, now I'm going to use the group law. Okay, so just sum first. So, so 
TV1 plus SV1 is T plus S V1. Then have T plus S V2. T plus S V3. And then there is the, the extra factor. So plus one half of, okay, I have to multiply the first times the second one. I have S times T times V1 times V2. S, T, V1, V2. And then I have minus the second times the first one. Again, I have S, T, V1, V2. And so we have proved that on, on, the, on this curve is a group homomorphism because the, 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 the point S plus T goes exactly to the product of the value at T and the value at S because this is equal to zero. And another importance of this, uh, of this model is the fact that this curve here in this model will have the property that uh, when they are in the XY plane, these are geodesic for the contact distance. I leave this as an exercise, but we will see that this is a more general fact. If you like the video, you can let me know by clicking the like button. This will also suggest the course to other people. If you want to see more videos on Sabriman and Geometry, please subscribe to the channel. Click in below. Bye.